Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm very, very excited for today's video because today I'd like to talk about something that I feel like not too many people talk about and it is what happens after you've reached three stars. I feel like so often we focus on reaching three stars for the very first time because it unlocks landscaping and waterscaping and many more features and especially if you care more about the decorating process of the entire game than anything else, this kind of is like the official start of the game. Like you can finally start changing your island up, you can finally fully create it the way that you want and so very often this is the first thing that you focus on. But what happens when you've actually done it? Once, what happens once you've reached those three stars and you have all those options? Where do you even start? And that's exactly what I'd like to talk to you about today because I do have a certain process that I usually always do when I start a new island and I've reached those three stars and it can kind of also be considered a how I plan my island. So I hope that this might help you in case you are just starting a new island or maybe you're feeling a little bit stuck. So I would say without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So once you've gotten the three stars and KK has come to your island to give everyone a concert and then Nook has handed you like the island designer tools, I feel like at this point your island will probably be covered in trees and flowers and if you're anything like me, also in random decorations just for the sake of reaching three stars. That means completely random pieces of furniture that make absolutely no sense, a bunch of wasps maybe, and then just you know, like I said, trees and flowers everywhere. So for me, the very, very first thing I always do is a big cleanup. That, you know, essentially just means remove anything that you don't intend to keep. Um, if you obviously have built like entire areas that you do want to keep, don't like clean those up and don't flatten those. But for me, um, this actually means completely flattening. Unless I'm doing a certain challenge, like a no terraforming island where you have to kind of work with the default map, this really means removing everything and anything. I always start by filling in all the water because um, it's a lot easier to get around your island if you don't have to use the vaulting pole all the time. Then I go ahead and I actually chop down all of the trees. In my opinion, this is the much quicker and easier way. Um, you can easily replant them later on and kind of, you know, have like a little bit of a tree storage or something. But for me, this is the much better option because, you know, if you were to kind of dig them up and then store them somewhere else, you have to like eat something to be able to dig up trees which can take like a lot of time already and then your pockets fill up and you have to go somewhere else and plant them again and then it's just an entire mess. So I usually just go around, I chop them all down. It gives me a bunch of wood as well, which is great. And then I worry about it later on. I also go ahead and remove every single piece of item, no matter what that is. It all just goes in my storage for right now. And I also move all of the flowers to the beach, um, at least the ones that I do want to keep. If you already have like an idea for a color scheme or if you already have like a preference on what flowers you like and maybe what flowers you dislike, like for me, I don't like roses at all, so usually you won't see any roses on my islands and I don't really want to keep any of them either. But of course you could kind of take your preferences into consideration and putting them on the beach just helps because they don't breed out of control and completely litter everything, but you just have them stored there for whenever you kind of want to use them. And now with a completely flat island, that allows me personally to start with a clean canvas and design exactly the way I like. I found that it really helps me because I oftentimes feel very restricted if there are things in my way, like when I'm decorating, like if there's just like waterscaping or landscaping or, or any trees and I have to kind of take them down as I decorate. I feel like that very much gets in the way of my decorating process and my inspiration. So it helps me a lot to have a completely clean and flat space and then I just get to kind of design it exactly the way that I want. However, I do know that there are people who definitely think about this a little differently because an entirely flat island can also be very overwhelming. It can seem like it's too big and you're never going to have enough ideas. There are certain ways to reduce this overwhelming feeling, which we'll talk about in just a second. But if you don't have any experience on what kind of helps you and what's best for you, just kind of think about it for a while. Would you rather have like a completely flat island and just kind of build it up from the ground or would you rather fit certain decorations into what already exists. Um, I think my recommendation would still kind of be to remove trees because you might want them in different spaces and having them in the space that they're currently in can just feel a little bit restricting. But yeah, listen to how your brain works and then kind of make your decision from there. 
And now here comes the fun part, preparing and planning. I honestly don't plan many specific things about my eyelids. Like I don't have like a completely pre-established plan of my map or anything, or, or I don't completely pre-plan certain areas that I want to build. I'm very much more of a, okay, let's see if this works kind of person. But I do like to plan the general vibe and aesthetic of my island. It gives me an idea of where I want this entire thing to go, it guides me through the entire process, and in actually preparing a few things for my islands in this step, I have been able to avoid burnout so far. I'm not saying it's never going to happen and that this is the cure, but I am going to talk about how it's been helping me a little bit. So in this process, I always write down anything and everything that I have been thinking about on this new island. Do you have somewhat of an idea of what your island theme is going to be? You don't have to necessarily put a name to it, but usually there are certain you know colors or a specific item that you've always wanted to use, a specific code that you've seen that you really want to incorporate a certain vibe. You know, do you want your island to be more like a cozy island and like grandma kind of some lace prints stuff like that or do you like for my winter island i knew i wanted it to be very like serene and peaceful not too many items i knew i didn't want to have lag anything that you think of that you want your island to be that you want to incorporate you know specific villagers that you kind of want to be a main part of the island or something like that write it all down write everything and anything down this might also be the point where you start looking for codes, or you may have already done that, you know? Um, codes that kind of just speak to you that either fit the vibe and the colors that you want, or just the ones that you look at and you're like, oh, I love this code, I really want to use this. I usually use Discord servers for this, like a lot of Animal Crossing content creators who have a Discord usually also have like a design codes channel, which can be incredibly helpful to find some pretty codes. I also do use Pinterest. I usually type like a keyword, I'll, I'll write like ACNH path code or something, and then I will go down an entire rabbit hole and click on different images and click on the like related images and I usually find a ton of codes that I love. Sometimes Google can also help in that sense and I also like to use Instagram for this. So whenever I see a, a creator use a pretty code that I want to use at some point on one of my islands, I go ahead and screenshot it so you can kind of imagine what my camera roll looks like. And also I can recommend um, cards. A lot of Animal Crossing content creators at this point have a card where they keep all of the codes that they've been using on their islands or maybe even more than that. I actually also have one of those. I always link it in the description box below and it has all the codes that I use on all of my islands sorted by island. I'm currently working on finally adding some pictures to all of the different codes, but that's also a big recommendation just to just browse through a few different cards and you might see something that you absolutely love. And once you've acquired a lot of different screenshots and a lot of different codes that you might want to use, my recommendation is to go code shopping. I will link the video where I go code shopping down below because you can kind of see the entire process, how I select codes, uh, how I make sure they kind of fit together and, and how I kind of judge them and choose the ones that I will actually use. But this is a very vital part for me in this entire planning and preparing process because it really nails the vibe and the theme. Because something I also do for it is make a mood board using some items that I really want to use on the island. For this mood board, you don't have to have like a perfect plan of an exactly the items that you want to use, just stuff that kind of speaks to you right now. Maybe items that you've never used before that you just kind of want to try out. Or of course, if you have already kind of noted down some colors and a vibe and a theme, kind of try to go within this theme. So just get them together, put them all in one spot. This first of all, it visualizes your entire theme, which for me helps me with my inspiration it usually sparks a lot more ideas and it also helps a ton when you're actually code shopping because you can see if the codes also kind of fit to the items etc along this entire process as i think more and more about my theme about the colors that i'll be using and i put together items and codes I usually get more and more ideas. These might be for specific areas, these might be for more, you know, items, codes, etc. And once again, write everything down. This is not just like that initial kind of brainstorming for your island, but this is literally any idea that you get, write it down. Even if your idea is that you want to have a water feature by your entrance, write it down. 
Don't rely on your brain to remember this later on once you're decorating. Trust me, I've been there before. Write it down so that you have it whenever you need it. And after time, you will get a list of possible area ideas for your island together. And once you kind of decorate, you can always go back to this list and kind of think about the ideas that you had. And later on, this might also spark different types of inspiration. And this will be like your continued list throughout your entire island process. Every time that you see something that does inspire you, whether that is a certain item placement or a specific, you know, area idea or certain colors, whatever it is, wherever you see it, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, whatever, you now have a place to put it. You now have a list to put it. You now have something to go back to whenever you're kind of feeling stuck or wherever you're kind of questioning how to start a certain area and stuff like that. If you haven't already done it, this might also be a perfect opportunity for you to think about the possible villagers that you want on this island. You might already have a list together and you might have already hunted for a few of them, but if you haven't, browse through the entire list of villagers and just kind of find some cuties that you want on this island. And now it's actually time to acquire items. If you are anything like me, you are the out of sight, out of mind decorator, which means anything that's not in your storage essentially doesn't exist. Like when I go ahead and decorate a certain area, I will literally go to my storage and kind of select a few items there that I want to use. And there's actually only very few items, even after playing for like one and a half years, there's only very few items that I'll think of like right off the bat and without seeing them. But most most of the items I have to see in front of me to think about incorporating them. If you're also kind of like that, I really, really wholeheartedly recommend preparing, acquiring items and filling your storage a little bit. So once that you start decorating, you have like a good selection of items that you can use. So in this phase, I would say go ahead and purchase some items from Nooks, you know, craft a couple of things that you can go ahead and craft. Use treasure islands if you want to. I've talked about what treasure islands are in my tips and tricks video. I will link that down below. Um, get some flowers and shrubs ready to go. I, like I said, like to store my flowers on the beach. And then as for shrubs, of course, you can keep them as the little saplings. Once again, though, I need to visualize them. I need to see what they actually look like once they're fully grown. So I always have like a little bit of a shrub storage in the back. <laughs> and then I would also say, go ahead and prepare a tree farm and some food to go along with it. So plant a couple of trees, maybe have them grow to different stages. I've also talked about stunting a tree in that tips and tricks video and then have them ready to go whenever you need them and have a little bit of food ready as well. So you can go ahead and dig them up without any issues. And this entire thing, like, you know, preparing some shrubs outside, preparing a tree farm, maybe even keeping the mood board up on your island for a little while helps to also reduce the island size, like the part of the island that you can decorate right now. And it helps with feeling a little bit too overwhelmed, at least in my opinion. I've also done an entire outdoor storage. So there were like a couple of items that I just used in every single area on my island, which was back when I did the plant core island. I just had like an outdoor storage and I literally lined up like 10 cacao trees in a row and stuff like that. Also, if you don't have a good catalog selection just yet and not a lot of DIYs, there's still ways for you to get inspired. Number one, if you have the DLC, I would definitely recommend kind of playing through a little bit of the DLC because with every house that you decorate, you unlock more items and you have a bit of a better idea of what even exists and also you can purchase a lot more items from the DLC as well and then number two and these two also kind of go hand in hand is browse through everything that the game has to offer if you want to if you kind of want to avoid spoilers like that and explore it as it just comes to your nooks and stuff of course that's totally fine but that's something that's helped me a lot is to just know what the game even has I've also talked about some resources where you can do that in my tips and tricks video so I I really recommend watching that one and then you could go ahead and make like a little mood board on canva you know and just put them together in a digital type of way so that whenever you do decorate you know what else there is even if you don't physically have the item just yet in my opinion, this is a big, big part of the process. And if you go into it, seeing it as such and seeing it as part of your island designing, it really is a lot of fun to get some items. Let these further inspire you, browse the catalog, like I said, and if anything sparks an idea, like I mentioned before, go ahead and write it down. And once all of this is done, you should now have an island idea, no matter how rough around the edges it is, codes that you will be using that you tested out and you love. You have a villager lineup you're looking forward to. You have a 
list of ideas for areas or certain items you want to use somehow and you will have a filled storage and everything ready to go. And now it's time to decorate. I usually start with the entrance because I, at this point, usually have like a pretty good idea of what I want it to be. But of course you could start wherever you want. I hope that this somewhat helped you in kind of not being too overwhelmed once you've reached the three stars. And I hope this entire preparing and planning process helps and inspires you the way that it does me. If you have any more recommendations or things that you do once you've reached the three stars, leave that down in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. And then I hope you have an awesome, awesome time until I see you in my next video. Bye everyone.